deserves it. How many know he deserves it? Hallelujah. All of our worship, it belongs to you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. There's nobody like you. Come on, as we continue to just worship the King of Kings, come on, let's lift our hands and we'll just begin to just praise him and worship. Speak well of him. Hallelujah.
Jesus belongs to you. My thank you, Jesus belongs to you. How many know he's a way maker? My provider, that's he is. He's my strong tower. Yeah, he's a healer. He's a healer. this morning through the pouring down rain to have this choir sing down heaven and we act like God means nothing to us. The eagle, when they train their baby to fly, creates a vortex. It's a wind tunnel. They take the baby to the highest highest place available. Drop the baby in the vortex and the baby eagle learns how to fly as the parents create the vortex. The choir just created a vortex of worship for us. Some of you caught it. Some of you didn't catch it. So if the choir doesn't mind coming back to give us the chorus to create their vortex one more time so we can show God that we are ever grateful for all, for all of the things he has done for us. Now we have some baby dedications here today and the Bible tells me that where there is unity, God commands a blessing. So if you're not ashamed to give God praise, I want to invite you to stand to your feet and give God some praise. Because my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs, belongs to you. Come on and lift your hands in his presence. If you're not ashamed, my hallelujah somebody press that way here this morning. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Belongs to you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah. Belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah. My hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my hallelujah. Is he worthy? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord a round of applause. Oh, you can do better than that. He's a great God. 
He's the magnificent God. He holds no good thing from us. Surely we should not hold a good thing from him. Hallelujah. Oh, baby, it's just me. Well, I'm going to give him praise by myself. Hallelujah. Now to him who is able to keep you. I have come through sickness unscathed. God has provided when I didn't have food. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I can. This is the day that the Lord has made. We should. Rejoice. You should make your body do what it doesn't want to do sometimes. All right, let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. Our responsive reading today is under the guise of reconciliation. And it comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 21. And it reads this For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet... Now henceforth we know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wait that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them, and hath created unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, that we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. All together? For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Amen. We're going to have another selection by our fabulous choir, and then we'll have our, our welcome.
Amen. Great is the Lord. Great, great, great is the Lord. Amen. This is your first time here at a service with Shiloh. Would you please stand so we can acknowledge you properly? It's your first time here. Amen. God bless you. Please remain standing. We thank you for visiting here. And this is a little expression that we used to say in my old church, and it's fitting for Shiloh, where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Here, you will never, ever find a river or fountain that runs dry. <laughs> Amen. So on behalf of Reverend Kelly and the deacons and the leadership here, we welcome you once, we welcome you twice. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, let's give him a hand clap. Praise, hallelujah. And to our online viewers for your first time, if this is your first time, we welcome you just the same as if you were here. And we would like to encourage you to come and worship with us on any given Sunday. It is better to get close to the fire than to be further away from the fire. Amen. At this time, we will have our video announcements. Attention all members. There will be a special call meeting on Monday, April 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. in the main sanctuary. We will discuss the future use of the Legend Church and the Early Learning Center school space in the Family Life Center. No other topics will be discussed. Baptism Sunday will take place on April 28th at 9.45 a.m. For more information, please contact the church clerk, Ronnie Lang. Teen Church and Children's Church will take place today at 10 o'clock a.m. Ages 3 through 4 will meet in the nursery. Ages 5 through 12 will meet upstairs. And ages 13 through 19 will meet in the Family Life Center. For more information, please contact Titus Brown or Candace Mumphrey. Attention all youth ages 4 to 19. You are invited to church on the yard in front of the Family Life Center on Sunday, April 28th at 10 o'clock a.m. The guest speaker will be youth pastor Joseph Johnson IV from Elizabeth Baptist Church. The quarterly new members orientation class will be held at the Family Life Center on Sunday, April 21st and April 28th at 8.30 a.m., as well as Saturday, May 4th at 10 o'clock a.m. For more information, please contact Deborah Collins. The Grief Share Ministry will meet on Tuesday, April 23rd at 6.30 p.m. in the Family Life Center. The topic, Is This Normal? How Grief Affects Us. Attention all graduating seniors. The New Era Baptist Convention of Georgia is currently receiving applications for their 2024-2025 scholarship. The deadline is May 1st. For more information, please contact Arlene Mallard. There will be a Vacation Bible School organization meeting on Tuesday, April 23rd at 6 o'clock p.m in the Family Life Center. For more information, please contact Rufus Stewart or Ronnie Lang. The Women of Wisdom celebration will take place on Saturday, May 18th at 4 o'clock p.m. in the Family Life Center. For more information, please see their table located in the Narthex or you may contact Eldred Warren, Diane Fort, or Sharon Smith. The Sisters in Christ Ministry are planning a trip to Aruba on February 19th through February 23rd, 2025. There will be an informational meeting via Zoom on Thursday, May 2nd at 7 o'clock p.m. and an in-person meeting on Saturday, May 4th at 9.45 a.m. If you are interested in this trip, you may stop by the women's table in the Narthex or contact Monica Mormon. The Middle Georgia region of the New Era Baptist Convention of Georgia 
quarterly meeting will be held at the Tremont Temple Church in Macon, Georgia on Saturday, April 27th at 11 o'clock a.m. For more information, please contact the church office. The deadline for announcements is Wednesday of each week. Please submit by email only to Melba Lee at mlee at shilohmcdonough.org by 12 noon. All announcements are subject to editing. Have a wonderful Sunday and a super week. What is autism? Autism is a developmental disability. Autism is a developmental disability. Difficult disability. I don't know. <laughs> I would say someone that is kind of to themselves, someone um, that are sometimes afraid of different lights and sounds. So about 50% of every individual with autism doesn't have a job. I would assume it's pretty high, but I'm not sure of the exact number, but I'm assuming that's high. Estimates show that between 70 and 90% of autistic adults are unemployed. That seems unfair. Did you know that, that it was that high? Did you I think did it would not. be that high? No. Yeah. And I think these are the same chances as everybody else. I would say maybe 70%. I, I don't think I know that either. True or false? Autism is the fastest growing developmental disorder in the United States. True. Uh, true. True. People are always able to tell if someone is autistic simply by looking at their physical appearance. False. <laughs> false. False. I would say false. False. Autism spectrum disorder affects people of all races, ethnicities, and socioeconomic groups. True. I think true. True. And the final question is true or false? 3.5 million people in the United States are on the autism spectrum. True. I would probably say true. True? True? True. And by the way, myself and the entire production crew is on the autism spectrum themselves. I did not know that. <laughs> the world can treat people better with autism by treating them like they're normal. Amen. Amen. And as the uh, message says on the screen that there is a giveaway here again at Shiloh at the education building just across the road. And be careful when you cross the road. You know what happened to the chicken? Some of y'all catch it on the way home or crossing the street. Praise the Lord. We have additional announcements. Uh, there will be a pastoral search committee member survey sent out to everyone. And I know you're asking, what is it? Well, the uh, Pastoral Search Committee member survey is the member's opportunity to have an input as to who is selected to be our next pastor. The survey will end on April 30th. So check your emails for, and check your, check your email for an email from Google Forms. Uh, it will cl click the link and it'll take you to the survey. Uh, after April 30th, the results will be made available to the congregation at that time. Amen. Is that right? Y'all can say amen? amen. Just, just to let me know that y'all heard me. I just want to make sure that the mic is on. Just want to make sure that the mic is on. We have a special announcement uh, by uh, Mr. Willie Brown, who is, he was a sheriff. He's running for sheriff. He's a sheriff candidate. Are you here, Mr. Brown? All right. And as a uh, shallow disclaimer that we're not telling you who to vote for, but we want you to make informed decisions in whoever you work vote for in whatever election. Is that all right? All right, amen. Mr. Brown, you may come at this time, sir. Thank you very much. And good morning, Shadow. Wow, it's, it's glad to be here this morning. Uh, again, my name is uh, Willie L. Brown, and I'm running for Henry County Sheriff. 
And this is not my first time in this house. I've been here many times before um, with uh, helping out with uh, the food bank across the street here. And also, uh, I'm a veteran. And uh, we've, uh, you guys have, have always hosted an, an event back here in your uh, center. And I'd like to uh, thank you guys for doing that. It's been a, a pleasure to attend those events. And I would like to thank the pastor of this house, the membership of this house for allowing me to be here today, and my bishop, Bishop Donald Bellow at Divine Faith Ministries International for allowing me to be absent from that house on today. And uh, I just wanted to say a couple words. Um, and your praise and worship has carried the tone already for this. It says, um, talks about hallelujah and praising God. And serving is what it was saying. And so that's what I'm here to tell you, that I'm here to say that I would serve you as the Henry County Sheriff, not myself personally. And a lot of you have known me throughout this community, uh, at least a few of you, because I recognize you from, uh, from being in the, in the community here. So, um, I would ask that you go out on April 29th through May 17th and early vote because if you're praying for a change in your life, you want to receive that prayer as soon as you can. And so the sooner you get out and, and pray for what change it is that you want in your life, the sooner you, that you will receive it. And then on May 21st, you can go out and vote in the uh, primary itself but early voting starts april 29th through may 17th okay and so go out and vote and again when you vote make sure you vote with someone that you know this church has been serving this community for over 150 years and i pray to god that you serve it uh, another 150 years and with the leadership that you have in here i'm, I'm sure that you will but again, in closing, what I would like to say is this here. And it's found in uh, 1 Timothy 5th chapter, the 22nd verse. And it says, put your hands on no man suddenly. Look at all the candidates, and then you make that choice for yourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shiloh, and have an awesome Sunday. And we'll be here until the end of the service if you'd like to speak with us. Amen. Don't put your hands on a man suddenly. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to have our baby, baby dedication, so I'm going to ask Reverend Kelly to come. Thank you. Thank you. It is great that we have the opportunity to give back to God the babies and the children that God has so graciously blessed us with. Today we will be dedicating four children back to God. Amen. Amen. That is a good thing. That is a good thing. It's a sad thing when we don't hear babies crying in the church anymore. So it's good to hear babies cry in the church. We will have, uh, I'm going to ask that the parents, the grandparents, and the godparents, if you would join us here in the pulpit, and I'm going to ask for the other family members, if you would uh, join us there at the altar, if you would come to the altar. With the parents of grandparents and godparents, if they're here, of Malaysia, Tanya, Daniel, will not you come and come to the pulpit with me? The parents of Malaysia, Tanya, Daniel. The parents, the grandparents, and the godparents, and then all other family members, you can be at the altar. Will the parents and the grandparents, and if they're godparents, of Blessin Bell and Quatavius Bell, Bell, excuse me, Blessin Bell and Quatavius Bell, join us here in the pulpit and then all other family members can be on the floor. The parents, the grandparents, and the godparents of Blessing Bell and Quantavius Bell. And then we ask 
for the parents, the grandparents, and the godparents of Kier Jadoras. If you would join us here in the pulpit, and then all other family members can be on the floor. The parents, the godparents, the grandparents of Kier Jadoras. If you could join us here in the pulpit, and then the all other family members, if you can be on the floor. to see each and every one of you on this Lord's Day. We come today to dedicate these precious babies to the Lord. These parents are bringing their children, presenting them first to themselves, and then their children before the Lord our God. This dedication provides a constant reminder to Shiloh of our commitment to children. This dedication is also a reminder to these families of the biblical responsibility that you have in teaching uh, and bringing your children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. To the parents and the grandparents of these beautiful babies and beautiful children, to the parents and grandparents, God has entrusted you with the magnificent responsibility of raising your children. God has given you the responsibility as a gift of life. So it is your responsibility, parents and grandparents, it is your responsibility to protect and to nurture your child. God expects you to teach your child through the example of a godly life. So you must strive to live godly before your child. You must strive to live godly before your child consistently according to the word of God. A baby is like a clean slate, not quite understanding right from wrong. So you must dedicate yourself in teaching your child the ways of Jesus. Parents and grandparents, if you accept this responsibility, please say, I accept. Amen. To the godparents, do we... Uh, I know we have godparents for uh, Miss Alim and Miss Janae. Okay. Do we have godparents for the Bells as well as the Matt Daniels? Okay. Okay. So godparents, I'm talking to you now. Godparents, I'm talking to you. Accompanying the parents and making this commitment, godparents, you are there to walk with them. Modeling this kind of love cannot be done alone. Modeling this teaching God, parents, cannot be done alone. It requires the help of others as yourself. For this reason, the parents have called upon you, God, parents, to help them in the teaching and in the raising of their children. So I now direct my questions to you, Godparents. By coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to help the parents fulfill a vow that they have just made in becoming parents and your responsibility of becoming Godparents? If you do, say, I accept. Amen. Amen. Shiloh, won't you stand? Members of Shiloh, won't you stand? Family, I want you to look around the sanctuary because I want you to know, family, that you are not in this alone. 
We are the family of God who resides at 262 Macon Street. Family, you are not alone. You have this congregation who is walking this walk with you. This congregation who is behind you to support you in the teaching and nurturing of your children. Shiloh, if you accept this responsibility, then won't you say, we accept. Amen, amen, amen. We are now going to anoint the babies with oil and pray over them. Precious baby, we anoint you and bless you in the name of Jesus. My precious baby, we anoint you in the name of Jesus. Won't you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for these babies. And God, we give these babies back to you. We ask you, oh God, that you would protect these babies. We ask God that you would guide these children. We ask, oh God, that you would make their path straight. We ask, Father, that you will enable these parents, these grandparents, and these godparents to lead, to teach, and to direct these children. We ask you, oh God, that you will enable them to guide these little ones in the way that you would have them to go. Enable Shiloh, Lord, that we may be an example of holiness and godliness before these children. Enable Shiloh, oh God, that we may lead, teach, and direct and guide these little ones in the way that you would have for them to go. We ask you, God, that you would shepherd these babies. We ask you, oh God, that you would protect them from danger seen and unseen. We ask you, oh God, that you would be the ultimate providers for these babies. We ask you, oh God, that when sickness come upon them, that you would show yourself strong as being Jehovah Rapha. We ask you, oh God, that you would do as the good shepherd does so well, and that you will walk with them all the days of their life. We lift these four children back up to you. As our ancestors lifted up babies in the village, we lift these up to you, O oh God. And we ask you, O oh God, that you will continue to watch over them, that you will bless them, and that you will keep them. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with these babies. And so God, we give them back to you. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. As you are going to your seats, thank you. We have uh, Miss Malaysia McDaniel. We have a certificate for the baby and a book. You're welcome. Blessing Bell and Quantavius Bell. Your hands are full. Let me give it to you. Give it to your lovely wife. And we have one for Quantavius. And then Little Miss Turner. Little Miss Turner, we have. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. <laughs> Children are a heritage unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will prepare our hearts for our offering. It is offering time in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. 
Amen. God gives us food. He gives us seed for food and seed for sowing. Bible says that you reap what you sow. If you give bountifully, you will receive bountifully. And the antithesis would be true as well. There are many ways to give. Give a fly. Uh, you can give online. Go to shalomcdonough.org. Click on the link and it'll send you to the rest of the information. Or if you're here in person, drop it in a bucket. Or if you're not here in Orlando, you're doing what we, what's called Bedside Baptist. You're unable to get here. Uh, you can also mail your offering in P.O. Box 2410, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. And with that being said, if you are ready to give, please stand to your feet. Go next to our very fabulous musicians to give us some marching music because the Bible loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for these gifts that we are about to bring unto you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. given that wishes to give we don't want to miss anyone all right our doxology please
Y'all will never hear me singing because I know where my lane is. Amen. Bless God. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask if anyone desires to come down to the altar. It is prayer time. If you need to get just a little close to hear from God for your situation, whatever God has put on your heart, whoever you are carrying in your heart, somebody can have some uh, medical challenges, some physical challenges. A friend may have some legal issues, but I can guarantee you that God will hear your prayer. The Bible said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible, but you must believe because God is able as the Delphonic said, now y'all don't throw no, no stuff at me. But God will blow your mind every single time. When you think he can't, he will. When you think he won't, he will. Never, ever doubt God. Let us look to the Lord. Father, we give you thanks. We give you honor. We give you glory for these little babies that were given back to you. For even you desire, desire us to be just like little children, trusting you for all things, hoping in you for all things, believing that your word will not fall flat, nor will it be void. But your word covers, it develops, it produces, it multiplies. Whatever you send it out to do, that thing shall be accomplished. Well, today, God, I have to call you to the carpet and ask you, Lord, to bless us today. Send your word to those who are in need of a word of healing. We send a word of deliverance for those who need to be delivered. Somebody here today, God, is seeking a miracle. For we know you are a way maker. We know you are the one who creates miracles. We know you are the one who gives us what we need and the time that we need. We call it being on time. But God, you are not constrained by time and thank God. But you give us what we need at the appointed time as you see fit. So we carry our faith. We carry our victory from victory to victory. Because your word declares that the just shall live by faith and not by sight. So we are believing you today, God, for all the things that our hearts are crying out to you with. We lift up all of our relatives. We lift up all of those who are in the hospital this morning. Touch them right now, God. We send your word of healing even now, God. We pray for that young man, that young woman who is standing before the judge. Looking for mercy. Looking for another opportunity. Well, I know, God, that you are a God of a second chance. You are a God of a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh. God, your word is a light unto my feet. It helps me direct my path, O oh Lord. For your word declares that the steps of a righteous person are ordered in you. We come to the house of worship, God, to thank you for all that you have done for us up to this point. And because your word declares that you will never leave us nor forsake us, we look forward to tomorrow. For we know that you hold tomorrow in your hand. Even before my bed is laid, you are there. When I lift my wings and my eyes to the morning, you are already there. So I will command my body to give you praise. Every time the Holy Spirit reminds me of how good you have been, how good you are. For this, God, we give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you for Shiloh Baptist Church. Thank you for the powerful preaching of Reverend Kelly. Thank you for this leadership here, God. Thank you for the spirit that resides in this place that goes and touches people as he wills. 
we say thank you. We give you glory and we give you honor. For it's in Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap as our choir comes back. And the next singular voice you hear after our choir will be that of Reverend Karen Kelly.
won't you pray with me? Heavenly Father, you are an excellent God. You are a marvelous God. You are a glorious God. You, God, are an awesome God. So, God, we praise you. We exalt you. We lift you higher. We magnify you. We honor you in this house and in our lives. For there is none like you. There is no one, oh God, who can do what you do. And for that, God, we're grateful. Speak to us in this moment. For we need a word from you, God. So we, your servants, are listening. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Won't you turn in your Bibles to Joshua chapter 3? Joshua chapter 3. I want to say welcome to all of those who are visiting with us for the first time, as well as those who are watching us online. We want to say welcome to our worship experience. We are delighted that you are worshiping with us on today. Joshua chapter 3. Miss Teresa, I did it again, and I'm sorry. Can we back up to verse 9? I really meant to email you this time, but I forgot. Joshua chapter 3, but we're going to start reading at verse 9 of the text. In your own personal private time with God, I do encourage you to read the whole chapter of Joshua chapter 3. Um, this is an amazing chapter as to what God can do. But for the sake of conversation and to hear a little bit more of it in context without reading all 17 verses, I want to start reading there at verse 9 of the text. Verse 9 reads, so Joshua said to the children of Israel, come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, by this you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Gargashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you and to the Jordan. Now men from the tribes, excuse me, now therefore take for yourselves 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe. Verse 13 says, and it shall be Excuse me, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. So it was, is what verse 14 says, so it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priests who bore the ark dipped in the edge of the water for the Jordan overflows at its bank during the whole time of harvest. 
harvest, that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zaratan. So the waters that went down into the sea of the Araba, the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Then the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all Israel crossed over. If I was in Bible study, I would say, and on what? on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. As we wrestle with this text on today, let us think on the thought crossing the Jordan. Crossing, crossing the Jordan, crossing the Jordan. Joshua chapter 3 tells the story of the crossing of the Jordan River. The Jordan River serves as a boundary marker. The people of God had to cross the Jordan River in order to enter the promised land. Joshua chapter 3 emphasizes a great truth for us, and that truth is that God's work must be done God's way in order to receive God's blessing. It's not just getting across the river that matters, but it must be done in such a way that God receives the glory because God will bless anyone who does his work his way. For Joshua in the nation of Israel, the Jordan River was physical. But for us, our Jordan Rivers can be defining moments in our lives. Moments in our lives that seem impassable. Moments in our lives when our character, our integrity, our credibility, and our Christian character stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with an obstacle that just won't let us pass. Moments in life when we are faced with a situation that seems to hold up the next phase in our lives. You may be standing at the Jordan River on today. You may find yourself in a difficult place right now and it seems as though you cannot move forward. You are not there by accident. The good news news on today is that God has led you to this place, but God will not leave you by yourself. Verse 1 of the text says that early the next morning, Joshua and the nation of Israel, they left the Acacia Grove and they arrived at the banks of the Jordan River. And verse 2 of the text says that they waited there for three, for three days. Who likes to wait? Waiting may be the hardest discipline for us as believers. Most of us would rather rather do anything than to wait. Some of us would rather do the wrong thing than to wait. As the nation of Israel, as they waited by the Jordan River, the people must have wondered, what in the world is Joshua going to do? Joshua could not ask these people to swim across the river. They didn't have enough construction materials to build boats or rafts to get across the river. But in order to possess the promises of God, Joshua and Israel had to cross the Jordan River. Shiloh, this teaches us on today that for every promise, there is a price tag. For every dream, there is a cost. The promises of God are ours, but oftentimes there are Jordan rivers that must be crossed before we can possess them. Yes, God has good things laid up for us. Yes, God has a future and a hope for us. Yes, God 
God has come to give us life and life more abundantly, but none of those promises will come easy. They come with a Jordan River. God says to Abraham and Sarah, I have a promise for you, but you first must cross the Jordan River of infertility. God says to Joseph, Joseph, I got a promise for you, but you first must cross the Jordan River of betrayal and being forgotten. God says to us, I have an inheritance that is laid up for you, but Jesus first had to cross the Jordan River called Calvary. Yes, we are holding on to the promises of God. Yes, we are looking forward to experiencing and embracing the promises of God. But what our text teaches us on today is that many of those promises cannot come except we cross the Jordan River. Look at verses 3 and 4 of the text. The Israelites undoubtedly felt both the uneasiness and the eagerness as they prepared to enter the promised land. <clears throat> Knowing this, verse 3 of the text says that the Israelite officers gave instructions to the people, when you see the Levitical priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, you should move out of your positions and begin to follow them. Joshua put the Ark of the Covenant in front of the people because, see, the Ark of the Covenant is the most important important piece in this story because see the ark represents the very presence of God this was their plan of action the Lord will lead the way and when they saw the priest moving with the ark they were to follow the ark this was to let the people know that God was going before them leading and guiding them all the way because verse 4 of the text says that they had never traveled this way before. The Israelites were supposed to be close enough to the ark that they can follow God, but they were supposed to be far enough away from the ark so that they can respect the holiness of God. Joshua in the nation of Israel had to rely on God in order to cross the Jordan River. This teaches us on today, y'all, that we must rely on God to cross our Jordan rivers. Before we can receive all that God has for us, we must learn to rely on the Lord. We must rely on God because God sustains us. If the truth is told on this morning, if God did not sustain us, we would have died in our misery. But God sustains us through the highs and the lows of life. God sustains us in this chaotic world. The only way we can make it through this world is that we must rely on on God. Jeremiah chapter 17 teaches us that when we trust in the Lord and when our confidence is in God, we will be like a tree that is planted by the water. We don't have to fear when the heat comes. We don't have to fear though there will be a drought because we are relying on God. There is nothing wrong with having stuff and things and things and stuff. There is nothing wrong with having a good job. There is nothing wrong with having wealth. There is nothing wrong with having a network. There is nothing wrong with having titles and positions. But what our text teaches us on today, that the only way we're going to be able to make it is that we must rely on the Lord. Is there a witness here in the house that can testify that you are where you are today because you have relied 
on the Lord. We must rely on the Lord. We must know that know that we know that the only way we can get uh, to where God will have us to be is that we must rely on the Lord for 40 years. Look at verse 7 of the text. For 40 years, Moses was all that the nation of Israel knew. Now God needed to do something to let the people know that just like his hands were on Moses, his hands are now on Joshua. And God will use this miracle to exalt Joshua in the very eyes of the people. God will use this miracle to give credibility to the leadership of Joshua. God will use this miracle to prove the doubters wrong. So in verse 8 of the text, the Lord instructed the priests that for them to carry the ark. And when they reach, look at verse 8, when they reach the banks of the Jordan River, they were to take a few steps into the river and stop. Oh, notice the text, y'all. Notice now, they were not to stand beside the river. They were not to stand next to the river. They were not to stand near the river. No, no, the Bible says that they were to stand in the river. Uh, there would be no miracles until the priest entered the water carrying the ark of the covenant. God arranged it that way so that their faith would move them from safety to danger. See, see, anyone can trust God on dry ground. Anyone can trust God in dry territory. But can we trust God enough to stand in a raging river, in an overflowing river? Can we trust God enough on ground that is not stable? Uh, look at verse 14. Verse 14 of the text says that the people did what God told them to do. Verse 14 says that the people left their camp to cross the Jordan and the priests who were carrying the ark went ahead of the people. Oh, this text teaches us on today, y'all, that there will be no miracle until we move. We all have doubts. Faith is not the absence of doubt. Faith is belief in spite of the doubt. See, see, faith says, I know I have doubts about what God is saying, but I'm going to step out and I'm going to trust God because I know what is true about God. And God responds to those who partly believe and partly doubt, but are bold enough to move in faith. See, when Joshua, the priest in Israel, what they teach us today, Shiloh, is that there must be a demonstration of our trust in God. See, we say that we trust God, but there must be a corresponding action to the words that come out of our mouth. So if you're trusting God for a new job, then you must fill out some applications or send in some resumes. If you're trusting God to be a healthier you, then you must be a little bit more active and you must change your eating habits. If you're trusting God to pay cash for a car, then that means you need to open up a savings account somewhere and start putting some money aside because see what our test teaches us on today is that when we move in faith God will allow the pieces to fall in the place come here Peter and help me testify Peter says that it is when I obeyed the word of the Lord and I launched out into the deep that I had a net breaking blessing Peter 
Peter says again, it was when I climbed out of the boat and that I began to walk on water. God could have worked the miracle for with them standing on dry ground, but often God tells us to do something. You remember when Jesus was faced with feeding the 5,000, Jesus asked his disciples, what are these people are going to eat? The disciples says, Lord, we don't know. And Jesus says, you give them something to eat. You do something. And the text says that they found a young boy who had two fish and five loaves of bread and they brought that to Jesus and they said to Jesus, Jesus, what are these among so many? And the Bible says that that was enough for Jesus to work with. He didn't need much, but he needed them to do something. And they brought it back to Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus multiplied that two fish and five loaves of bread so much so that they had enough to feed 5,000 men plus women and children. Oftentimes, God tells us to do the impossible so that when it is said and done, God alone can get the credit because we know that nobody multiplied that food but Jesus. So in Jesus, we can step out on faith and do the impossible. When we move in faith, we'll understand that through God, the impossible can be possible. The unlikely can be likely. The unexpected can be expected. Is there anybody here who is willing to move in faith? Uh, Joshua and the priests did not know what was about to happen. Oh, how I wish I was there on that day, because can't you see this? In your sanctified mind. They are standing there, and they see this Jordan River. They didn't know what to do. But the priest said that because God told us to pick up the ark and to go forward, we're going to obey God, pick up the ark, and move forward. Look at verse 15. God is so awesome. Because he look at when God would have the nation of Israel to cross the Jordan River. Verse 15 says that it was at harvest season. God, why didn't you let them cross when the water was shallow? God, why didn't you let them cross when they could see their way? No, no. The Bible says that God in his awesomeness arranged this crossing to occur in harvest season. The Jordan was overflowing is what the text says. It was overflowing its banks because the snow, snow melt from Mount Harmon had melted into the river. The winter rains had fallen and had raised the level of the river. Joshua and the nation of Israel would have to cross the Jordan River when it was at flood stage. See, at flood stage, the river was wider and it was deeper than normal. The first obstacles that they had to get over is that they had to cross the river. But then the second challenge they were faced with is that the river that they had to cross was wider and deeper than normal. The river looked like an impassable barrier between them and the promised land. Oh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes our Jordan rivers look like an impassable barrier. When we look at it through our eyes, it looked like it just ain't gonna work. It looked like we are not going to make it. But then when we look through the eyes of faith, then when we look through the eyes of God, we know that this too, God can handle it. The situation.
situation that Joshua faced as he contemplated the crossing was a wider and deeper Jordan River. There was no human strategy that could get the people to the other side. But if Joshua and the Israelites did not cross the river, they would not be able to possess what God had for them to possess. Joshua did not have a secret plan in his back pocket. The Jews did not know how they were going to navigate this river because see most of the Jews on that day they weren't there for the crossing of the Red Sea. All they had was a promise of God and a testimony of God. So they didn't know what in the world they were going to do. They had to engage Age in a test of faith. Oh, Shiloh, oftentimes God puts us in situations and in circumstances that only God can get us out. What do you do when you're faced with this type of crisis? What do you do when you find yourself hemmed in on every side? When we look at our Jordan rivers, we are without hope because we are anxious, we are alarmed, and we are apprehensive. When we look at our dismal circumstances, we are without hope because we are fearful and afraid. We may even lose a night of sleep because we're trying to figure out how we're going to cross this Jordan River. In these situations and circumstances, God tells us to step out on faith in him. Because see, many times, God tells us to step out on faith when the potential for the danger is at its greatest. But faith in God, faith and trust in God is when we can believe God when things make no sense to us. See, faith in God enables us to know that God is working even when we can't see God work with our natural eyes. The Hebrew men teach us that although it appeared that God wasn't working, God was working. Esther would take the microphone and Esther would say, God is not even mentioned in my book. So when it looked like God was not working, God was working. And you know, sometimes God has to open up our eyes so that we can see God is working when it looks like God is not working. Sometimes God has to open up our eyes so that we can see that Jesus is bigger than any problem we're facing. Jesus is bigger than any difficulty we're facing. Jesus is bigger than any evil we are facing. Jesus is bigger than any Jordan River that we have to cross. Just as the ark, just as the ark led the people across the Jordan River, Jesus will lead us in our darkest moments. And oftentimes, God hems us in because God has a purpose. And God's purpose is so that He can be magnified, He can be glorified, and we will know that God is the living God and the Lord of all the earth. Oh, look at the text, y'all. Look at verses 15 and 16 of the text. Verse 15 says that as soon as the feet, look at this, y'all. Look at this, y'all. As soon as the feet of the priest who was carrying the ark, as soon as their feet touched the river's edge, verse 16 of the text says that the water above that point began to back up and it stood a great distance away. And the water below 
that point flowed into the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. The water stood in a heap and their, as their feet entered the water, the river stopped flowing. It is as if God reached down and turned the spigot off to keep the water from flowing. Notice the text, y'all. The priest entered the water before the miracle took place. The priest had to get their feet wet before God will open up the waters. It took faith and courage for the priest to do their job. But when they trusted God, when they relied on God, when they obeyed God, when they moved in faith, then God performed his word. The water stood still. The water was cut off and the people crossed on dry ground. Each step, can't you see the priest and your sanctified mind? Each step that the priest took, the water opened up more and more and more until they were standing in the middle of the river on dry ground. This was a miracle of God. This was a miracle that happened after they obeyed God. This was a miracle that only the Lord of all the earth could do. Notice now, y'all, if the priest had not stepped into the raging river, if the priest had not obeyed God, no one would have crossed the river on that day. And it was only after they obeyed God that the water backed up and the water stood still. Oh, this teaches us on today, y'all, that we must yield ourselves to God. We are not ready to do what God wants us to do if we are not willing to yield ourselves to God. And until we step out in faith, until we get our feet wet, we will not fully see how God can move in our lives. Because see, how many of you know that a living faith requires actions? Uh, look at this, y'all. Verse 17 says that the priest be saved. The verse 17 says that the priest who was carrying the ark, they stood firm, is what the text says. They stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed. Their feet were not sinking. Their feet were not slipping. Their feet was not going down into the dirt. No, no. While the water stood still, the priest stood firm on dry ground while the entire nation passed by on dry ground. Uh, the priest waited there until the whole nation of Israel, more than a million people, they waited there until this whole nation passed by on dry ground. It took hours for them to pass by on dry ground, but nobody would be left out. And this miracle lasted until the last single person cross Jordan River. Since Joshua and Israel exercised their faith, they were able to see firsthand that God was with them. Since the nation of Israel decided to move in faith, decided to step out in faith, they could now possess the promised land. See, on this day, the Israelites learned that God is a living God. On this day, they learned that the, that the God they served was not like the God of the Canaanites. And it is the living God, this Lord of all the earth, who is among them and who is leading them and who opened up the Jordan River because how many of you know that the Lord of all the earth can go where he pleases. He can do what he pleases. He can bless how he pleases. On this 
day, the Israelites would learn that there is nothing too hard for the Lord on this day. The Israelites would learn that the God that they serve, he could do anything because the only God, only the Lord of all the earth who has power over creation, only that God can step into the Jordan River and allow the waters to stand still. On this day, they understood that they could not have made it without the help of God. Is there anybody here that can testify like the Israelites? That you have seen God work some miracles in your life. You have seen God do some stuff in your life. And now that you think back on it, you say, quit nobody but God. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help me, God. These people, they now have a testimony. Because, see, on this day, they found out that if God can roll up the Jordan River, if God can allow the waters of the Jordan River to stand still, then the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gagashites, the Amorites, means nothing to God. Oh, Shiloh, this text teaches us on today that the God that we serve, he can handle your Jordan River. I don't know what your Jordan River is. I don't know what you got across, but the Bible helps us to understand that there are some obstacles in our life that only God can move, but we got to get up and move in faith. God can move the obstacles like nobody else. So have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Have you any mountains that you cannot tunnel through? Have you any problems that seem unsolvable? Well, I stopped by on my way to heaven to encourage you as I encourage myself that God still specializes. God is still opening up Jordan rivers because God specializes in things that we think are impossible. So your obstacle may be gigantic, but God can handle it. Your Jordan River may be wide and deep, but God can handle it. So trust God to handle your Jordan River. Rely on God to handle your Jordan River. Is there anybody here who can say with me, I have seen God make a way out of no way, I have seen God do the impossible. I have seen God hand do a great work. Is there anybody here that's just like me, just like the Israelites, and say, I got another testimony as to what the power So whatever your obstacle, whatever your Jordan River, I don't know what you got to face tomorrow. I don't know what's waiting on you next week. I don't know who is waiting on you to get home so they can pick up the phone and tell you something. But I encourage you as I encourage Karen on today that Jordan Rivers are nothing to the God of all the earth. It seems uncrossable when you look at it, right? Your problem seems unsolvable when you look 
at it. But look with the eyes of faith. Because the God that we serve, I just believe by faith that if he did it before, he'll still open up a Jordan River so that you cannot say, this is what I accomplish, but this is what God did. The doors of God's church are open to you on today. We offer you Jesus on today. We offer you someone who loves you so much that he crossed a Jordan River just for you. And because he crossed the Jordan River just for you, you can come now and say, God, I surrender. God, I give my life to you. I offer you Jesus. But not only do I offer you Jesus, I offer you Shiloh. If you're without a church home, this is a great moment. We open up God's doors to you and we extend his hand of salvation and discipleship to you. This is your moment. singing that song. Those are one of those songs that we don't sing anymore. So I want us to leave singing that song. So please hold on to that song. Family, we have family that has come and asking for prayer. The Bell family is asking that we come and pray over their baby. The baby's arm was broken at daycare. So they're coming and asking that we will pray over the baby and come and pray over little Quantavius as he continues to develop in life. I'm going to ask for every believing 
parent, every believing spouse coming around this young family as they're having to wrestle with a few issues. Then my sister Gloria Brooks, Mary Brooks is coming asking for prayer. Amen. Our sister Mary Brooks is, has heart trouble and we're going to pray for her. I'm going to ask Reverend Mance, will you pray over the Bell family and over Miss Brooks as she wrestles with heart trouble? Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Father in heaven, we give you praise today, God simply because you are good. First off, Father, I want to pray for the father of this baby. And as a father of a baby girl, I know what he's thinking, what he's feeling. So I pray, God, as your spirit rest and reside in this family, God, I pray that you will give him the strength that his family feeds off of, God. Yes, Lord. Strengthen this young man in the name of Jesus. Name Father, we call on your healing power for the baby. Yes. We ask, God, that you would touch the limbs of this baby. Yes. Touch the bone, God. Touch the tissue, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. For we know that not only are you a hearing God of prayer, but we know that you are a God of healing as well. Yes. So we call on the healing name of God, our Rafa. Yes. God, you are our healer. Yes. Touch this baby even right now. Yes. Touch this family, God. Strengthen them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we look upon this young lady here today, God, who has come to you seeking help, seeking deliverance, God, seeking God. healing for her heart. Yeah. Father, you put the heart together. Yeah. And we know that the heart evolves. Yeah. It pumps. It does what it's supposed to do according to your magnificent design. So today, God, we call upon her heart today to pump like you designed it to do. We ask God that it will perform exactly how you have created that heart to perform in the name of Jesus. And even before she leaves this altar, God, let her begin to rejoice as that blood continues to pump through her heart and throughout her entire body. In the matchless name of Christ our Lord. Today, God, we give you glory. Today, God, we have witnessed Miracle after miracle for this young baby in her arm to be healed as you could declare, Father, and this young lady's heart as you declare, Father, in the priceless, matchless name of Christ our Lord. We touch and agree that all things shall be according to your word. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Won't you stand with me? Won't you stand? Don't forget about the food giveaway across the street. Dear God, we thank you for being who you are. We thank you, oh God, for reminding us of your power. We thank you, oh God, for reminding us that you are the living God. God, we thank you for reminding us that your great work did not end in Joshua chapter 3. But that even on April the 21st, 2024, yes. you are still a living God. Yes. Thank you.
you, God, for reminding us of that. So, God, as we leave this place, some of us are, have our own Jordan River. Some of us have come across our Jordan River. Some of us are approaching a Jordan River. We ask, oh, God, that you remind us that you are the Lord of all the earth. Keep us in your care, God. Watch over us, oh, God. Be with us, oh, God, as we go our separate ways. Keep us, O oh God, together as a family. Bind us together, Lord, with your course of love that cannot be broken. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.